Hi, I'm Clay Smith. I'm the operations manager here at Moonshine University. I head up all the endeavors in the distillery, including all their botanical spirits production and education on botanical spirits as well. I am going to talk a little bit about uh, where the flavor profiles for specifically gin, but this applies to other uh, types of spirits like uh, Amari and Absinthe and other botanical spirits uh, in, the, in the realm of uh, the same type of production methods. Uh, but uh, talking about where those flavor profiles kind of generally situate themselves into one of the four basic categories. And with gin specifically, our, our three basic components obviously has to be juniper, number one, and that's sort of situated in the savory category, along with the other two main components. If there was a holy trinity of gin, it would be these three components, and that's juniper, coriander and cardamom. I rarely see uh, a gin that doesn't have the first two and it's about 50-50 whether or not uh, people respond to, uh, have a very strong reaction to uh, cardamom uh, as a third. But uh, these are three components that, that contribute to the savory side of things when uh, thinking about a finished spirit. If we're talking about the, the sweet components, that's usually attributed to the citrus components such as lemon peel, orange, orange peel, bitter orange peel, or any sort of variation thereof. A lot of, a lot of new craft distilleries are playing around with uh, more uh, intricate flavor, uh, flavor profiles. Uh, such as a macroot lime, a blood orange, or, or where those where those kind of sweetness kind of carries through. When we think of like lemon peel, you may not really think of sweetness, but that's generally what it contributes to the finished component or the finished gin uh, overall. And then uh, there's things that contribute to the floral aspects of a of a gin. Uh, whether that is actual flowers like rose and, and lavender and other various uh, edible types of, of flower, flowers. And then we have things that contribute to the finish in the spirit, that part that when, as you swallow, things are going down your esophagus and you get that warming feeling or a, 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 the flavor of a, of a particular component. In the more classic London dries and in some uh, new Western style or, or American style gins. That's typically from things like our grains of paradise or cassia or ginger or even black pepper if we're talking about you know a more dry profile. Um, those are the things that contribute to that. They also have flavors of their own but they do contribute on the on the finish uh, much more intensely. Sometimes there's a disconnect between sort of the aroma of something uh, and the flavor profile of your finished spirit. And that's where the, this little category of binders come in. And the binders, uh, most traditionally, are a, a series of three. That is angelica root, orris root, and licorice root. Angelica is, is typically used to kind of give a punch up on the nose and kind of give you a little bit more of a burst and pop that top and you're, you're smelling the gin and getting that first impression of it. Angelica root can be used uh, to kind of push that out into the atmosphere a little bit from, from the bottle. Orris root, on the other hand, uh, kind of functions, takes two different things and makes them play nicely together. When we're talking about orris root, we're talking about tying the, the nasal perception and the, the aroma into the palate perception. Uh, when it comes to uh, that first impression when you're drinking it, if you're uh, having trouble uh, getting, you know, the aroma's really where, where you want it to be and maybe the flavor's where you want it to be, but they seem to be two separate things, uh, the use of orris root can kind of bind those two things and, and make them a little bit smoother of a transition. Last but not least, licorice root can be a little bit of a double-edged sword because it's a regulated component. The FDA regulates it at a very specific percentage of your whole usage. Um, but what it does is it will give you a perceived sweetness without giving you a coating sweetness like sugar or any other honey or anything like that. It sweetens up the overall uh, spirit uh, in a perceptive uh, methodology there. And that kind of answers some of the questions that we get about where specific botanicals are contributing to a finished spirit. If you want to know more, we have a botanicals workshop that it covers both gin, uh, absinthe, and amari. Uh, and we talk quite in depth about other 
things like aromatized wines uh, during that course, uh, feel free to check us out online.